Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about Fedora versus Ubuntu. Well, I'll start with the Fedora. First of all, if we talk about the user interface, here we have some of the utilities on the top right corner, like we have power option, we have volume and some network options. Then on the top left corner, we have activities button. If you just click on it, it will open all the docked application and desktop windows for you, just like this one. Other than that, we have date and time in the middle of our screen and here we have calendar and we will have all the notification of the system in here as well. After that, if we talk about the desktop environment, well, you will be surprised to know that Fedora and Ubuntu both comes with Genome desktop environment by default. And you will be more surprised to know that Fedora is not based on Debian or Ubuntu. It is based on Linux kernel. Now, the important thing that I want to discuss in here in is the desktops. Here you can see we have two of the desktops available in here. If I just open this one, I have nothing. But if I just click on this window on the left side, here I have my software center open. It means you can have different kind of work in different desktops. In case if you want to add more windows, just open anything in this window and it will add one more desktop onto the left side of your screen. Here we also have small windows appearing here. So from here you can navigate through your desktops as well. That's a really good thing in terms of usability of the systems. I'll just close this one. And now if we talk about the release cycle of Fedora, well a new Fedora version gets released after every six months and it is supported for 13 months only. It means that from 6 months to 13 months, you must perform an upgrade into your Fedora. Upgrading Fedora version is very simple, but it requires a good internet connection because you will be requiring to download about 1.5 gigabytes of file with every version of your upgrade. Of course, that may not be true for every upgrade, but in most of the cases, you will have to download these much files. So you will require a good internet connection for that. And now if I talk about the package manager, Fedora uses DNF as its package manager. If I open my terminal into my Fedora, here it is. Let's download and install an application to see what package manager it uses. I will write here sudo DNF install VLC. DNF is a package manager in here. In Ubuntu, it uses apt, but here we have dnf. So I will just enter my password, hit enter, and now it has started the process to download and install VLC Media Player into my system. Now I'll talk about the support. Well, in terms of Fedora, we have one main forum that is known as Ask Fedora. You will have all the answers of your question onto that forum, and you will have a great community over there in terms of having different solutions to your problem related to your Fedora. Now I'll open my terminal once again. So I will just search for it and this time I will open a utility to see how much resources Fedora is using at the moment. The name of the utility is top. I will just hit enter. Well at the moment Fedora is using around 1500 megabytes of my RAM. That's very heavy onto my hardware resources because there are many Linux distributions that are not that much heavy onto hardware resources. And here we have different processes and information about how much resources each process is using. So as we have seen that how much resources it is using at the moment. Now let's see how much resources do you require to have in order to install Fedora onto your machine. Well, you should have 20 gigabytes of your hard disk space and two gigabytes of RAM, but four gigabytes of RAM is recommended to have smooth experience. I will just close this one and that was all about the Fedora and now let's move on to the Ubuntu. This is how Ubuntu looks like. So again, first of all, I'll start with the user interface. We have some of the applications that are docked on the left side of our screen. As you can see, we have Firefox as a default web browser. We have Ubuntu software. We have Files Explorer. We have Recycle Bin and we have Home Folder that is docked onto our desktop. Then we have some of the utilities on the top right corner and in the center we have date and time. If I just click on it, it will open a calendar and we'll have the notification of the system in here as well. Now let's see 
Other than that, we have show applications button and if you just click on it, it will open all the applications that come by default into your Ubuntu. I will just get out of this and now I will discuss the thing that is really important in Ubuntu and that is desktops. If you just press your super key, here you can see we have two small windows at the top and here we have this one and we can see a small window in here as well. If you just click on it, it will move towards this side. It means you can have different desktops in your Ubuntu and you can have different kind of work in each of them. For example, if I open my terminal into this one and now if I press my super key and now if I move towards second window, here you can see I do not have nothing. But if I go back and if I open my first one, here I'll have my terminal. Now I'll talk about the release cycle. Well, Ubuntu has two versions regular release and the long term support. Regular release is similar to Fedora. It released after the interval of every six months and it is supported for nine months. The other version is long term support or it is also known as LTS. It comes with the interval of two years and it is supported for next five years. And regular releases brings every new features, new software versions, but in the LTS release, it holds on to the older version. And that makes Ubuntu a very great choice for people who do not like to have frequent changes. And now I'll talk about the package manager in Ubuntu. Well, Ubuntu uses the APT package manager. For example, if you want to install something, you have to use APT just like I am using here. So I will just write here sudo apt install vlc. Here apt is a package manager. And now if we talk about the support, well Ubuntu has a very great and a very powerful community forums. Like we have two main forums of Ubuntu named as Ubuntu forums and as Ubuntu. You can find all the helps you needed in order to use Ubuntu and you will have all the answers of your queries there as well. Now, I'll talk about the desktop environments. Well, Ubuntu has Genome as a desktop environment by default. Ubuntu also offers different flavors like we have Kubuntu that comes with KDE, then we have Lubuntu, it comes with LXDE, and then we have XUbuntu which comes with XFCE desktop environment. We also have Ubuntu Mate. I'll open a utility into my terminal that is called as top and then we'll see how much resources my Ubuntu is using at the moment. Well, as you can see here, Ubuntu is using almost 1120 megabytes of my RAM and it's a bit heavier on the hardware resources side because that do not use this much of hardware resources. So it also means that Ubuntu is not a good choice for the older machine. The hardware resources that you will be needing to have Ubuntu onto your machine you will be needing 4 GB of your RAM and 25 GB of your hard disk space in order to install it. And it is recommended to have more than 4 GB of RAM to have smooth experience. And that was all about the Fedora vs Ubuntu and that brings us to the end of today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Till then, take care.